Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kuei, joined by Steph Sabra. And we're looking at Love, Death, and Robots Season 1. We're going to do Episodes 1, 2, and 3, back to back to back. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see a cut-down version of our reaction because we're only allowed to show you a limited amount of picture-in-picture. -picture. However, if you want to watch the whole thing with us, uncut, uninterrupted, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash jabbykuei, or become a member of this channel. But you will need your own Netflix subscription so you can open up the show in an adjacent window to our reaction. And it's like you're watching it with two of your favorite pals from the internet. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Here we go. Okay, so a super dumb thing happened that I have to explain to you guys before you get into the reactions. I'll try my best to boil it down as simple as possible. Basically, I thought we were starting with volume one, episode one. I don't know if it was a user error or a Netflix glitch of some kind, but we started with volume three, episode one, and I didn't realize we were in volume three until the end of watching episode three from volume three. So the reaction you're about to see for volume one, episode one was shot at the very end of our first day of shooting. So if we seem fatigued at all in the video, that's why. We shot a couple episodes out of order is the short of it. The reason why I felt like it was really important to share this information was because in volume three, episode one, familiar characters come back, but we don't recognize them at all. There it is, the convoluted message I had to get across to you before you guys, enjoy. I've never seen a robot in heels. We are fucking lost, aren't we? <laughs> lost? Okay, that's rich. Uh, let's see. We just passed the Ravage Church. There is the blood pit. Uh, ah this way. Here we go. That was a Terminator reference, by the way. Oh. Stepping on the skull. More beautiful than in the brochures. Come on, giddy up, guys. We've got so much to see. It's more beautiful than the brochures. Behold, the entertainment sphere. <laughs> the entertainment sphere. What do humans do with these things? They bounce them. That's it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Come on, here, try. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? Boing, boing. No way. Stop being a whiny pussy and fucking bounce it. <gasps> wow. Jeez, calm down your motherboard. Okay. Oh man, this is so exciting. It's gonna destroy it. <laughs> it's pretty anticlimactic. Yeah, well, welcome to humans. <laughs> Facts. Show me what you got, big boy. Music, one of our better inventions. This robot is peculiar. It's unclear. We checked their code, no creator signature. That's because they were made by an unfathomable deity that created them for no apparent reason out of dust. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> they came from a very warm soup. Sorry for the weight jam. What's the point of this thing? It's wearing the hat. Perhaps years. I don't have hours or perhaps years for this. What if you try to irritate it by moving your digits across its keratinous fibers? Maybe, maybe that'll make it move. What? Why? I don't know. It couldn't hurt. You don't have any idea, do you? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what do you mean, uh-oh? Well, I don't want you to panic or anything, but I think you've activated it. Act, what, what does that mean? Well, as I said, I am no expert, but if the noise ever stops, it's going to explode on you. <laughs> <laughs> Numerically, it suggests that this is your ancestor maybe a few thousand generations back. Well, numerically, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. We are robots. We don't do coincidence. Go on. Call it daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Either is equally applicable in as much as we don't have genitalia. Do you have an off button? Son, your skin and bones, are you recharging properly? Oh, jeez. Especially when your ancestor's entire existence was defined by 13-year-old human males using it to teabag opponents in virtual battles. Uh, slow down. Teabag, what does that mean? Don't look it up. I am looking it up right now. Yeah, please do. Here it is. What, what the hell? <laughs> Why did you make me look this up? Yeah. Told you the memory to. of this has yeah. been burned into my circuits forever, and you must. Uh... Huh? Cat bagged. Come on, that's cat bagged. You deserved it. Sure, your ancestors are very proud of you right now. Oh, nice. What do you trace your ancestry back to? Oh, I'm glad you asked. I come from a proud, long line of baby monitors. Oh. Not many babies around anymore, right? Yeah, we kind of sucked at our job. 
The idea behind these was to annihilate as many humans as possible as quick as possible. In the end, no nuclear winter was needed, just the long, heedless wow. autumn of their own self regard. <laughs> WTF. Sorry, thought that would sound better than, nah, they just screwed themselves by being a bunch of morons. Uh -huh. You can't just crack one. Nah, they're just dumb. At one point they genetically engineered their cats to give them opposable thumbs. Yes, once we could open up our own tuna cans. You are not going to explode if we stop petting you, right? Now lower. Oh, by the way, I brought some friends. Oh no. Fuck me. Said lower. I guess this means we are extending our vacation, right? <laughs> they love the cats. For full disclosure, you guys, we, we sort of did things backwards. We accidentally watched Volume Three, Episode One, and then this. So the episodes are presented to you in a chronological order, but like we got sort of screwed up because Netflix decided not to listen to me when I said Volume One. We are familiar with these robots from having watched Volume 3, Episode 1, and we're going to look clueless on the reaction on Volume 3, Episode 1. <laughs> people, people are going to be like, why don't you know who they are? Yeah. Don't you get the cat reference? Now I get the cat reference. There's a good introduction to those characters. It but, is. Yeah. No, it, that's a perfect first episode for this yeah. type of show. We are actually halfway through the season right now, and we're watching Episode 1 of Volume 1, and I'm like, I'm having to like pretend I didn't watch anything else. I'm like, this is the introduction into the series yeah you know the last thing we watched before this was the farmer episode mm -hmm. okay so on this uh, it's cool how they established the environment and the right. characters each of these characters i actually admittedly like them more in volume three episode one than i did here but maybe it's just because i was already familiar with them after you know when i got into this episode so but it's fun nonetheless like the examination of humanity from this sort of aloof standpoint of like where we don't matter anymore and we're just sort of this footnote in history or not even that that's being too minuscule about it but like we are in the past what would a species or a artificial intelligence think of us many years into the future after we're long gone yeah you know yeah and, and like things we hold so important yeah what was really driving that thought home what made me feel a little sad was when the little robot was sitting on the head of the guy who was falling over at the diner did you notice that no he was using the skull as a perch to sit oh. on and it just made me think like, cause we are very precious about the dead, the burial process and whatnot. And that's for us more than it is for them. Like we say, you know, respect the dead, but really it's about respecting what the dead mean to us more than anything. When you bury someone, it's not for them, it's for you. It's so you can bury that, the meaning it has to you, right? I doubt that the dead really care about the tombstone. The tombstone is more for your own ability, to, yeah, your appreciation to go and, and like have a place for that. With how we treat the dead to see the skull being used as a seat it just kind of messed with my head for some reason i got really like cerebral all of a sudden in the middle of the episode when it was trying to be goofy and whatnot i'm like this is so bizarre like this could actually be you know what i mean yeah because robots one of the biggest differentiating characteristics is the fact that they don't possess empathy the same way that humans do so right. they're analyzing it from a purely logical standpoint yeah. which i also love that every explanation can be the most simplistic mm -hmm. or the most complex yeah we messed up or well we had environmental damage we had pollution whatever all of these answers or we just screwed up yeah <laughs> god that just like really messed with me for some odd reason like okay we ourselves we take care of ourselves right mm -hmm. we, we're, we're so proud Precious about not getting hurt and whatever. Just imagine a thousand years from now, you somehow your bones are still intact and a robot is using your head for a seat. <laughs> not that you would care because you're not around anymore to care. You have no feelings about it. But how do you feel about that in this moment? Knowing that eventually that's how your body's gonna be used. It's weird. I'd for sure be a ghost and I would haunt that robot <laughs> forever. I don't know, something's recycle, wrong with, reuse. <laughs> yeah, something's wrong with my circuits. <laughs> What's going on with my circuits? Oh, man. I, should, I shouldn't have sat on that skull. No, yeah. I was wondering how that food was still intact. The burger didn't completely... I think that's showing how messed up the food is yeah. that we make. Like, if you watch a McDonald's burger, it can last for years. You're like, why? What's in there? Yeah, you know, no joke. I did a McDonald's commercial years ago, and you know how they get it to look like super fluffy and whatnot? It doesn't taste the way it looks, is the easiest way to put it. They do all kinds of things to it to make it look delicious, but when you eat it, it's really about the looks. For the commercials. For the commercials. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Ooh, it, do you, you know. have a spit bucket? 
I did have a spit bucket and I wasn't doing that initially. And the actress opposite of me was like, yo, you gotta stop eating that. You're gonna get sick. You gotta spit into the bucket. I'm like, what bucket? She goes right over there. There's like three buckets for us. I was like, oh shit. So after every time they said cut. Yeah. Just like spitting all that shit out. Anyway, you're gonna see a light shift because you're you're about to see episode two, our reaction to episode two of volume one, and that was earlier in our day. Everything is backwards. Anyway, here you go. Wow. Looks really good. Really good. Archangel Dispatch, this is Blue Goose. You need me to sing you a lullaby, Tom. You know how I like it. Sultry and slow. So I guess they're going into a, a wormhole or something? Yeah. Uh-oh, something has gone wrong. Oh, no. That's the worst thing to wake up to. Artificial gravity not working. Shit. Oh, she's all right. Situation sucks, but it's good to see a friendly face. She'll be okay, Tom. We'll let the engineers check out your ship. And since you'll be stuck with me for a few weeks, you should relax and enjoy the station. Uh, something's amiss. Yeah, do we trust her? Oh, that's cool. Mm, Greta wanted you, you back. Like the view? They designed her to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Go off, Greta. I'm just trying to make sense of all of this. Finding you again. All the way out here. Maybe it's fate, Tom. Written in the stars. Her, sk her skin looks so good. The texture, like the animation. These are the Salaki station coordinates. This is the view from where we are. 150,000 light years from home. How long were we in our tanks asleep? In subjective time, only a few months, several hundred years have passed back home. Whoa. Chart a course back. You'd never reach the world you left. But some people have a hard time with the truth. Of course they fucking do! You might as well be telling me I'm dead. But you're not dead, Tom. Look at her, Tom! Try again later, Tom. As many times as it takes. What did she know? She knows something. I need to see this place. I need to see you as you really are. You're not ready. Please. Show me, goddammit! I do care for you. What? I care for all the lost souls that end up here. Oh. Oh. Oh! Oh, put me back in the Matrix. This sucks. Yeah, <laughs> no. I'm going back to sleep. See ya. Wow. Looks like an inside of a body. Oh, no. Hello, Tom. Oh no. Wait, what? Dream within a dream? Is that what's up? Yeah, let's do that again. <laughs> You're in some lucky station. Sector. That's hundreds of light years off our course. At least there's a friendly face here. Oh, yeah, I'd rather be in the dream world. Uh, I would have died en route. If I'm inside of a situation like that, I know now from watching too many movies, when someone tells me, yo, you're not going to be ready, all right, I believe you. Fuck it. We're staying here. Yeah. Because yeah. whatever's on the other side of this is probably not pretty. No, I would have stayed asleep. Also, if I'm traveling thousands or millions of miles away and I see a familiar face, sketch. Right. You're not seeing a familiar face. <laughs> right. It's nope. true. 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh man, that was trippy. I was actually thinking the entire time. I'm like, something seems off. Like I'm betting he's still inside of his pod. That was one one thought that was running through my head, especially when the like the when she came in in the dress and stuff like that, and all the golden whatever. And I'm like, there's something so sus. We all know from the get go that she is not who she claims to be. But like the means of how that is being executed could be a different number of ways. She could be like an alien that morphs, right? But then at a certain point, I'm like, the, the only thing that makes sense is that he's still in his, inside of his pod somehow. That's the only, but like what was crazy was they were in a shared matrix. They were in a shared simulation. Because if you notice at the end, the body says biohazard. They got rid of her for some reason. Either she died because of like anxiety or something, or they just executed her so that this alien that's living in this uh, remote destination can keep towing with his friend. Oh yeah, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah, so you think she was actually on that planet before she had the wrong traitor out as well? And they took the I think they got intercepted. Okay. I think what happened was they got intercepted or they or they did go off on the wrong path somehow, but according to the young lady, she's like, No, th this was like accurate. There's no reason for it to be messed up. So if that is true, it would seem to me that that alien species intercepted them somehow. Don't know how, but they did. It seems like, you know, in the remote regions of space, maybe you get lonely or something. And so she just wanted someone, some companionship. And this other person either died because of anxiety or something, or like the worst kind of panic attack, or she got rid of her because she just needed companionship. And she's like, if I get rid of this person, I can start the simulation over and we can keep hanging out. Yeah, the, the, you know you're lonely when you have to intercept people's ships and be like, be my friend, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> fake this. I mean, to what, to where that leads, who knows? But yeah, that was trippy, man. That's another thing of questioning reality. Yeah, did you enjoy that? Yeah, that was really dark. I wish there was more of a happy ending. I'm a happy ending type gal, but at least he got one happy ending before he found out the nightmare, right? <laughs> I heard years ago that Namco or whatever, Tecmo, whatever the company is that made the game Dead or Alive, spent a considerable amount of money in order to get jiggle physics right i mean you see the game and it kind of makes sense i've seen a, a female or two the way that her body moved ha had a realistic look to it in terms of gravity and whatnot i thought that was interesting jiggle physics jiggle physics i it want that to be like yeah. my email or something <laughs> <laughs> step at j jiggle physics .com. Yeah. hey come where do you want the wine in here please Oh, that's 70 show guy. To all the sets that are gonna to have all the, good to all the good times, what I meant to say. We're gonna, in our place. Yeah. yeah, you didn't need to put that ice in there. What the hell? What is it? I want you to look inside this ice cube and tell me what you see. Is it? I think I have a magnifying glass somewhere. Is that a what? Is it, what is it? I'm so curious. A bug. No. Are there spirits in its side? What? I wonder if there's more of these things in the freezer. A woolly mammoth? How does that make any sense? Said the sloth just comes walking out. Oh my god. There's a lost civilization in our refrigerator. sense you think yeah that's clearly an early medieval city yeah <laughs> i mean come on everyone knows that woolly mammoths died out sometime in the late neolithic period yeah everyone well that's that <laughs> oh god oh god is that gonna come to life because it was iced well it'll make good fertilizer too soon Let's check again. It's like the Simpsons episode. You, you ever see um the Halloween Simpsons episode like when uh, Lisa's no tooth ends up making a whole civilization? No, no. <laughs> the Industrial Revolution already. That's amazing. Oh, it's the Renaissance. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. They got a Starbucks. Oh, those really are everywhere. Huh. <laughs> What's going on there? Oh, fuck! Fuck! Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's like I'm blinded. <laughs> Tactical nukes are going off in our refrigerator, oh. and you want me to calm down? I'm sorry, you, sh you should see your face. It's... What, what's wrong? Uh, yeah. It's been over an hour. Maybe they've 
had a chance to rebuild. We have to face the possibility that they, well, that they didn't make it. It's a little surprising that with all the airplanes, they didn't fly out of the fridge. <laughs> they made it. They did. Are those flying cars? It looks like the Emerald City, only you know, it's emerald. <laughs> That's beautiful. Okay, honestly, that one looks a little bit phallic. No, mm, I like don't still know. Go. I love how chill they're being about this. Uh, I guess they went through a little bit of a pyramid phase. That's a lot of ridges. <laughs> oh. Oh. You think they're coming back? You didn't pull out your cell phone or anything to videotape it. <laughs> no proof. Oh, it start over again? Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa, that's sick. Oh, wow, just resets. All right, well, <laughs> that was interesting. You go first. <laughs> I didn't know where that was going to go, but I actually really liked it because he was watching the cycle of humanity mm -hmm. and how stupid we are. Once again, like we have all this technology, we keep moving forward, but at the end of the day, are we still moving to a path of destruction regardless? <laughs> Only to repeat the same cycles? That's definitely an aspect that I was exploring there. There's something called the Great Filter. I forgot who came up with this concept. You know what the Great Filter is? Mm -mm. So the Great Filter is a, a question of how far will humanity get? There's something called the Fermi Paradox, which is if there are aliens out in the universe, where are they? Like, why don't we see them? Surely we, should, we would have seen something by now, right? And there's the notion of or advanced civilizations. Because like the you, the universe is old enough, right? It's 14, 15 billion years or whatever. And so surely there is a species that's old enough and advanced enough that we would have maybe seen them or something or they would have seen us and made contact. And so the idea is that eventually civilization, advanced intelligent life reaches a point where they kill themselves. Like if you're not able to get beyond, I forget what the, what, what the great filter exactly signifies, but the idea is Generally speaking, an advanced civilization will ultimately lead to its own demise, like you saw with the nuclear war. But if we're able to get past the Great Filter, then we're able to have interstellar travel and, you know, colonize other planets, maybe meet other intelligent life in the galaxies or universes or whatever. So, yeah, it's inter I'm sorry, that was a weird... No, it is interesting because if we do reach this place where it feels like that can be not too far in the future where we have all this access, all this tech and we're not moving forward. Right. Because we're like bombs, then maybe. Let's see, the great filter in the context of the Fermi paradox is one possible resolution of the paradox. It posits that in the development of life from the earliest stages of abiogenesis to reaching the highest levels of development on the Kardashev scale, there exists some particular barrier to development that makes detectable extraterrestrial life exceedingly rare. So, oh. yeah, that's the summary of it. So we saw dinosaurs and woolly mammoths. I'm totally cool with never co cohabitating with dinosaurs. Cohabitating with dinosaurs. Woolly mammoths, though, I yeah. think we could have had a future with. Yeah. But what's kind of cool about these is that you can kind of interpret them whatever way you want at yeah. the end of it. It leaves it sort of open-ended. And one of the things I'm getting from it is the idea of there were two notions of how the universe would end either the great heat or a great or a cool down. Like it keeps expanding forever or it's a big crunch. And what it looked like there at the end was it was a big crunch and then life starts over again. Yeah. But from what I understand, that's not really how it's gonna play out. It's a cool thought, but because I, I watched science-y videos and whatever, and there was one called like the time-lapse of the universe or something like that. And what it chronicled was, you know, the universe just keeps expanding and eventually it gets cold and lonely and dark that's it and it's kind of sad and depressing but most of time will just be darkness you know the the graveyard of the universe is just going to be darkness for trillions of years and so the the crunch is kind of a cool idea because then it'll just reset like a video game or something like that you went right back to the dinosaurs and we do it all over again kind of like the end of episode two that we saw you know after things just went haywire with the alien 
just that Mario went down the wrong hole and just got to do the level again, you know? This, yeah. time, this time a different approach. That's depressing. I also like the idea of them looking at civilization and seeing its path and just watching like we all do. You know, we like, have these things that we see destruction and death or life, whatever it may be, but a lot of us are just viewers of it yeah. as opposed to act it. They, they could have done something. Maybe they didn't even try. They were just looking. Yeah. The curious thing was what, what happened there at the end? Like, what was that all about with the uh, science fiction stuff with uh, all the electronic lights and stuff flying around and whatever? And there was that hub in the middle that started out as like almost like a pyramid and then it developed this d diamond shaped hole. It's the matrix. Well, it made me wonder if they were just transporting the entire civilization somewhere else. Oh, yeah. You know? But then, like, that begs the question of why did it start over then? Because it wasn't even plugged in, right? Or if we make Earth so bad that we can't live there, but we live in little tanks like that one episode and just live virtually. Sure. <laughs> it's all sort of nonsensical and just for fun. I mean, it's just, it was a fun thought experiment. But more than anything, it, it showed us, like, our trajectory as a species, which is more than likely, like, if we have nuclear war, I don't understand how we get to the next step. Like, because the fallout afterwards, it's almost like a, a wasteland, you know, post, a post-apocalyptic society, post-apocalyptic world. Like, how do you get to the next step after that? You know, but anyway, that's yeah. a, that's a, that's a different conversation entirely. It was neat. It was a neat video. <laughs> I think the whole point is to make you think and talk, yeah. and I, that's what it's doing. And so it's just making me think about interesting things like the Great Filter and whatnot. You know, nuclear wars. Yeah, nuclear wars. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, do subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell icon. Please all notifications and vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. I'm Jabby Kawe. This is Steph Sabra. Peace out.